How you doing? My name's Archie with Strike Zone Fishing. I'm going to show you how to properly line up a reel for Wahoo Fishing. Today we're going to be working with the Talica uh, 50 two-speed from Shimano. It's a fantastic reel. It does over 600, 60 pounds of drag, holds plenty of line. I believe about, right about 800 yards of uh, 130 braid, which is perfect for what we're going to do today. I'm also going to show you how to line it up properly, how to put the right amount of tension, how to attach it to the reel, and also mark it which is a big question, how do you mark the reels to properly uh, stagger out your lines? Uh, I'm going to show you how to use rigging floss to mark, and also I'm going to show you how to splice in a different colored line to also act as a marker. Here we go, we'll start with securing the line to the reel. We're going to use the silicone tape. Tape it on, bump up the drag. This line winder is the Omega Gear line winder. It puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the line, especially with braid. Braid has no stretch, so it has to be packed on tightly. If it's not packed on tight, Usually you'll end up with a line dig, and of course that just causes catastrophic failures while fishing. The line digs in and you end up snapping, not with this machine. Wrap it around the spool a few times. Put the tag up. Let's do a uni knot. Right now we're putting almost 400 pounds of pressure per square inch on this line. All right, we're going to stop it right there and we're going to place our mark. This particular mark will call for a uh, 225 foot marker. So we'll stop right at 725 yards out so we can put another 75 yards on to make the 225 foot mark. What we'll do is anchor it in place. We need to get the line really tight. So what we'll do is jam up the spool, turn up the drag, get that really tight. We're going to start with 70 pound rigging floss, pull off about four foot. We're going to double it up. Make sure you have the ends offset and I'll show you why at the end. We're going to pull it apart. So now you have the center. Loop it on. That will serve as an anchor point. Then from there, we're just going to do a series of half hitches. Pull tight with each half hitch. Just like that. We're going to keep going until it's approximately four inches long, okay? 
You gonna do half of this? We have the desired length for the marker. Now we're going to lock it in place. We're going to do a locking hitch where we're going to go around and instead of once, we're going to wrap around six times. Lay the tag alongside the mark. Take the loop, wrap the opposite direction. What happens is this is going to wind up, this will unravel. Pull down on the tag. Put a good amount of pressure, that way you know the mark is not going to move and that you have it tight and there's no slack. So now we have the tag end, what we're going to do is we'll pull it apart. And this is the reason why I did offset so it's easy to pull apart. Unravel it. Give a little tug to get the slack out. Go around, overhand, another overhand. And this will keep it from unraveling, going in and out of the rod tip over and over. And there's your marker. So that's one way you can do it, and it works really well. This is a tried and true uh, system. It's been around for ages. It's easy to do. Um, one other way you can mark it is by adding on an additional section pre-cut to whatever length you want, in this case 225 feet. Here we can do, since this is hollow core line, we can splice this into it. So now you'll have a sleeker transition and the nice thing about it is that you can replace it without having to undo this or having to cut this off uh, and so on. So next I'll show you how to do that. So now we're going to take a few feet of the line off the reel. Okay, we're going to leave about three feet out, choke up another three feet, and begin to feed the line into here. Okay. First, here's how you splice it. This is how you pull that line through. This is a number four single strand hard wire. Same thing you'd use on king mackerel fishing. This is just folded in half, so where I can insert it into the hollow core. Feed it in once you've got about three feet fed through and that you have about three feet of tag left. 
pop the wire out the side, let it do it naturally so it goes through the weave. Uh, you have to be careful. Like Open it up. This white line has been pre-measured and cut at 225 feet. So we know this will serve as a marker. So what you do is feed it through that wire loop and pull it through. So now we got three fit fed onto it. Now with the original tag that we left out, we're going to feed that inside here. So now they kind of interlock into each other, overlap. So we'll slide this. That will tell us our starting point there. And do the exact same thing here. Pass it through. And again, this is the pre-measured 225 foot top shot of a different color braid, same strength, 130 pound, hollow core. And just to show you, this is going towards the end of the line. This is going towards the reel. Slide this a little bit. Let it come out. Here's our wire loop. Again, we're going to insert that tag we originally started with. And we're just going to pull it through. Pull on the tag, make sure it's all the way through. Pull on this sat tag. And what we're going to do is bunch the excess together just to make sure there's no slack between the two. This is a 100% knot connection. So now there's a little tag. What we're going to do is just slide that back just a little, trim it. Slide back down. Do the exact same thing here. Slide this back a little. Trim the tag end and start from here. So what we end up with here is a smooth transition between two different colored lines. Same strength, 100% strength connection here. And again, a pre-measured section of line. Seventy-five yards, two hundred twenty-five feet. There you are. Okay. Tie that off, and then mount it up to your rod. Tie your bimini. Put a nice three hundred pound swivel, and you're ready to go.
So we just finished spooling up our reel. Next, we're going to cover how to tie the snap swivel onto the end of the line. Obviously, it's very important. Um, with high-speed Wahoo tackle, uh, you're going to be pulling a loads of tackle at a high rate of speed, and uh, it's very important this connection to your snap is very, very strong. So I'm going to cover two different connections. One is the classic bimini twist, and then I'll show you how to do a hollow core loop splice. We're going to start with the bimini. We're going to take about uh, four foot of double line, separate the two strands, twist. As you're twisting, slide back, that way you don't bunch up the twists. We're going to do about 30 twists here. Next, I'm going to anchor it. Grip on the main line, the tag end, I usually bite down, compress those twists, and then you'll see the tag start to wind up. Once you've reached the point where it cannot wind up anymore, separate the two lines, do a half hitch on one, half hitch on the other. What we'll do is get all the twists out. That way we'll have, okay. Now we're gonna do a half hitch here, half hitch going under. Half hitch over, under, and then I'm going to, last half hitch will be going over. Now we're going to lock it in place, separate the two legs, go over, twist it about six times, go between the separation. Pull back on the loop just so it doesn't collapse. Let it coil down nice and neat. It's always good to have a long tab because what we're going to do is pull back just to get it cinched down. And then from there, trim it close. There's your bimini twist. Another loop you can put, if that is not an option, then you can do a hollow core loop splice, and I'll show you how to do that. Pull a little bit of slack here. Make sure there's no twists on the line. And go up about two foot. Again, get your number four single strand hardwire. Again, there's a fold in the middle. I'm going to push it through. This is going towards the reel, away from that end. We're going to feed it up about three feet up. And then push it through. We'll open up that loop. And then we're going to grab as far as the line itself. And we'll fold this back, kind of roll that to where it's nice and smooth, and we're going to pull it through. And 
in. We'll slide it back out. And we'll just slide this back. Here we got a loop. Now we're going to secure it. So now we're left with that two foot tag that we started with. We're going to take the wire and feed it from here up and pull the line through here. So that will lock it in place. Okay, once you reach the joint, slide the line back a bit. Bring the loop out. Put the tag through there, and again, pull it through. Pull the slack out. Pull the slack out, one end, slack out, this end. Now we have a seamless loop. So whether you go with a holocore loop splice or a bimini twist, you'll end up with a loop. The connection to the snap swivel is the same. Here we're going to use the Diamond Fishing 300 pound snap swivel, stainless steel. It's a dual rotating snap, meaning it spins up top, also spins over here at the bottom. Free spinning under a tremendous amount of pressure, which is perfect for high-speed wahoo fishing. To connect it, we're going to use a offshore loop, also known as a cat's paw. Feed the snap through the loop. Do a few twists, make sure it's centered, and bunch them up. Again, a very, very strong connection, perfect for what we're doing here. One other important aspect about high-speed wahoo trolling is that you're going to run to a lot of tangles and to eliminate a lot of those tangles is obviously what we covered, marking your lines. Well, you also got to mark your reels as far as letting the crew and everybody know where this reel goes and the position. So we took a label maker here and we'll label this reel. Again, 225 foot PR, that's uh, port rear. This outfit will only go in one place. It has that one mark, and we'll use that one sinker, 48 ounces. So it's important that we label this. The moment you mark it, that way you don't mix it up. There you go. And then, of course, you'll do this with the rest for their designated positions. Again, just to eliminate the tangles, no tangles means more fish. Uh, more fish obviously means a better day. So that's how you do it.